we had a couple a, 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 a topic about this before that God is not going to create you in his likeness and he doesn't give you the, the powers he possesses there's power angels envy us imagine they've made they've, angels are made from great light but they envy us you know why they envy us because firstly what we are made of is is a grade of sand and they are made of extraordinary eternal light and god has given us this extraordinary power and they are serving us imagine an angel is serving a moral a, 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 a mortal man you know why they envy us it is because we change literally we grow with beauty we have stages in our appearances we have stages in our growth they cannot they are born like that and they are forever lost they'll never see a, a change they'll never see another resemblance in them but we are literally just like the glory of god you as a human being transforming that is what angels find so amazing that how is it that you can change form like this we cannot you're so extraordinary that each and every fallen angel hate. Why do you think that in how they're tormenting you? Because they see the likeness of God. They see the glory of God. And why do you think you need to sell your soul to actually get to the riches of the world? Because your soul possesses the power that the Lord has placed within you. Your purpose is within your soul. That's why your soul is replaced with your career, your music, your sock, your eating it because you are literally exchanging the power of God for superficial materialistic things but I'm gonna keep on moving I'm gonna keep on moving right because there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the light of Jesus. Let's go and move. Same same book, same verse. Now we're starting from 37. We're going to 42. So for those who just got in, it's Mark chapter 14, verse 37, verse 42. We're about to continue. Lord, let your will be done. Right. Mark chapter 14 verse 37 42 thank you so much Ndi. Zef, Zepo. thank you so much I hope I pronounced your name right and it reads and he came and found them sleeping and he said to Peter Simon are you asleep could you not watch for one hour hey <laughs> guys I'm going to read that again. And he came and found and he found them sleeping. And he said, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch for one hour? And 38 says, watch and pray. Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. So you understand that the power of prayer is not to lead you into temptation. Because the devil is waiting for your weakness. Let me carry on. And then we'll, Lord, thank you. Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing. Do you hear this? The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing indeed, but the flesh is weak. And 39 says, and again, he went away and prayed. Imagine Jesus now is going away again. He prayed, saying the same words. 40. And again, he came and found them sleeping for their eyes were very heavy. Oh. And they did not know, and they did not know what to answer him. How many times has Jesus come back to our life to save us from the same thing that has put us in hell? And he says, "Really, really, when are you going to read your Bible? Because I've given you the the powers in your Bible, but we are not reading the Bible, and then we we we, we literally want help from people who are outside." But he says, "I am your helper." Anyway, I'm sorry. 40 verse 40 says and again he came and found them asleep for their eyes were very heavy and they did not know what to say or to answer him 41 says and he came the third time and said to them are you still sleeping and you're taking your rest is it enough that 
the hour has come, meaning that you do not feel what's going on. Hey, is it is it enough that the hour has come? The Son of Man is being betrayed, right? The Son of Man is yeah. The, sorry, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Tabanga, the Son of Man is in betrayed of the uh, the hands of sinners. And forty two says, Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayers is at hand. See, my betrayers are at hand. This is what's happening here. At a point in your life where you need to pray, at a point in your life where you need to be strong, I love that line where he says, the spirit is indeed willing. Because if your spirit was groomed, if your spirit was activated, if your spirit was literally fed each and every day, you would know that the hour is now. You would know that the enemy is around. You would know that the flesh is trying to make you sleep because he is trying to let you miss the hour of what? Of your blessing, of your labor, of your fruits. I mean, how long have they been walking with Jesus that did not feel that this is the present moment where our king is going to be taking into captive where they taking the king the same people that said father god no one will take you while we're still around we will fight till the end and he's trying to say that pray because you are going to be tempted if you do not pray you are going to fall in the hands of the enemy if you do not pray you are going to fall into sin if you do not pray then you are not going to fulfill the word that i have placed in you why have i called you here it's not once it is not twice it is not three three times that he woke him up but the fourth time he said aren't you enough of resting aren't we enough of resting the lord has given us so much power he wakes us up every day guys it is time for us to literally build our captivity it is i mean our capacity sorry it is time to literally open our eyes our spiritual ears our smells our senses because the devil is around the devil is around and he wants you to sleep that's why when you're reading the word of life you see yourself drowsing away but when someone calls you you can be on the phone for five hours and you post about it but you cannot post the script that gave you life that Oh my God. Kimbo, thank you. The hour is now. In one of my notes I said, who can you trust these days to keep pushing in a time of trouble and dark times? Who do you trust? I'm going to read it again. Who can you trust these days to keep pushing in a time of trouble and dark times? Because even Jesus, the people that he groomed himself, the people he thought that these ones know my word, these ones are the next ones, literally disappointed him in the hour where he needed them the most. He he said, pray so that you do not fall into temptation. You see, he didn't say pray for me to be strong. He said, pray so that you do not fall into temptation. Because he knows that at your hour of being uplifted by the spirit, at your hour where the spirit is going to give you strength, he, oh my God, the devil wants to destroy and kill each and everything in your life. And do you know why he wants to kill it? So that you can miss your season of blessing so that you can miss your season of harvest because you've worked so hard and laboring in prayer and and then he's going to take it in a blink of an eye because you acted so swiftly because of your emotions because of your oh because if you go down the text it is the same night where peter got angry and he cut off a soldier's ear but if he prayed And he was strong in prayer. That night would have resulted in a different way. He wouldn't have taken out that sword. Because even Jesus was like, nah, why is it that you're coming to me like I am running a gang of thieves? Why do you come with knives and weapons and clubs? You know me. I've preached to you. 
And that's what the devil does. The devil will bring the people that loved you the most, the people that you used to heal, the people that you used to laugh with. And when the dark time comes and the dark hour comes, because you are touching them where it hurts, they will try and kill you. They will try and slaughter you because now they do not see the person that they used to cheat. They see a light of God that scares them. They see a light because they are living in the darkness. So who do you call in the darkest hour of your life? And what do you do when you're in a place of stagnance, of darkness, of pride, of depression? Guys, what are you giving up? What are you giving up? That's the most important question today. Yes, the devil walks like a roaring lion. And you know how fast these things are? It happens in the blink of an eye. Whereby you will see the next day that you've sinned. You'll see the next day that literally, oh my God. And you know that prayer when Jesus came back to them. He did not want Peter to feel so bad about denying him. If he prayed and he literally fought the flesh because if the spirit is willing indeed, it was going to push. Guys, do you know how I know that the spirit is willing? There were times in my life, there's still times now in my life whereby I am praying and the, the spirit is like, I, now we, I mean, the, the flesh is like, I, now we're weak. Now we, now we're weak. Let's stop praying. Okay, let's push for at least two minutes and let's stop. But the spirit is fire. The spirit just keeps on. You know why the body it is bored because it does not understand what the spirit is feeding to the spirit, what the spirit is empowering in the spirit, what the spirit is protecting for the next coming generation, for the next coming days. Do you know that your prayers and your laboring for today are protecting you for the next two years or what's about to happen in your life in the next three years? It is preventing an accident. It is preventing me. Maybe your mother from dying. It is preventing maybe your daughter from being in. It is your prayers that literally cultivate the future. Because if you do not pray today, then that's why the future is so dark. That's why you'll say, that's why people always speak about the past. And they say, you know, I used to be such a strong man. I used to be respected. You know why you fell? You fell because the power of prayer depleted. The power of prayer stopped. The power of prayer did not work anymore. And it's not even your prayer. It was prayer of your forefathers. It is prayer of your grandmother. Prayers of your parents. Literally that kept you alive. That's why you find a person that used to be strong back in the days. And now they have lost it all. Because he has no sustenance. He has no spiritual direction. He has no spiritual power. Because he has no prayer life. He is on empty. And that's what happens. People don't just fall. People don't just lose their jobs. You lose the favor of God. The kingdom does not know you anymore. Why does it protect something that is not practiced? Why should it protect something that does not know that it is alive? So you need to go back into reading the word. You need to go back into prayer. You need to go back into fasting. You need to go back and live a life. Jesus lived. It is time. There is no year darker than 2023. The devil is exposing himself. The currency is changing. Look at the money. If you're looking at our money. Oh my God. I want to show you something. South African money. We've got a logo now. In South Africa, this is a this is a new South African note. This is a Freemason sign. So you know that Freemason, right? It's people that work with Antichrist. And if you could see when you put this money together, I'm not sure if you guys see this. If you put this money together, there's six lines. There's six lines here. So if you have like a 20 there, a South African note, there's six lines. So 666, the number of the beast. Do you understand what I'm trying to say to you? That spirit shows you even something this small. But people are ignorant. They are fighting for this. 
You can't live without it. They are literally detaching their souls. They are detaching their spirits because of something that they think that they are building sustenance from. But no, everything is getting darker and darker. This money shows that there is a new government. Anything that happens in your country, when they change a currency, when they announce something that is not of Christian line, just know that there is a new government of darkness that is taken over. That's why even in the Bible, it says that the devil is not in hell. The devil is in the heavenly realms. What is it doing? It is orchestrating governments. Why do you think our government doesn't have God? It is because the devil is leading our society, is leading our leaders into places that are whole. Yes, diamond, like puppets. So you are busy praying for something that does not even belong to God. You are praying for something that God does not know because God only knows the word. God only knows the spirit. God only knows the... Oh my God. Do you know, I, I, I've always said this to you that if you are going to be praying to God and say, oh, Father God, help me like you helped Jesus in the book of Mark chapter 14, verse 35, when he fell down and prayed, when the hour felt impossible and you gave him strength, Father God, Jesus said to you that I cannot fill this cup but take because of your will oh lord let your will let your will let your will be done and not mine the minute you ask god to take charge in your life the minute you pray using his words each and everything opens each and everything unlocks each and everything is shown to you in a way that you've never seen that's why the smallest things like this you see them because he shows you that look what the world is running to and look what i am placing you into because there's so many christians that think that god is blessing them when they are getting a pro oh my god that, that that God is blessing them when they get a promotion, when each and everything, that when it leads you towards the world, it is literally trying to detach you from the spiritual realm because it can see that, oh my God, it can see that you are so invested in God. It is trying to distract you. It is trying to steal your time. It is time, oh, that's so cool, It is time, it is trying to steal each and everything that you've built in your spiritual life so don't allow the devil to steal your joy don't let the devil steal your future don't let the devil replace your your, 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 your supernatural gifts and power for superficial customs for superficial customs you know there's something here, man. My spirit is trying to lead me in. Father God, may I just please find this word? If I find it, then we're gonna have to talk about it. But if I don't, that means it's, we are not ready for it. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'll speak about it tomorrow. Yeah. See if you tomorrow. Here, I'll find you the verse. We've had actually, um, we've had a sermon on my live about this of what's gonna happen to the world, what's gonna happen to the merchants, guys. That verse even shows that people, people themselves, are being bought and being sold like merchandise, and this is happening. You do not see it, this is happening. Because your spiritual life is not at a point where you call yourself. Because you call yourself a child of God. You've been raised by Christians and you've lived your life as a Christian life. But you've been static. You've been static that you only depend on your pastor to pray for you. And you do not know the power that you possess of prayer. Things are not unlocking in your life because you're not praying for yourself. You are waiting for handouts. And that's not how it works in the heavenly realm. You are not going to work for handouts. You're going to work as hard as you work for that little wage or little salary that you're getting at work. You are going to work like that for Jesus Christ. Imagine you're so, you're so consistent. You're so consistent in going to work and not even earning what is valued for you. 
you are, you're working so hard, but you're not even reaping what you sow. And then God says, where am I in that? You know, he says it in Psalms chapter 127 verse 2. He says, why are you working so hard? Am I not your provider? You're going to work for food day and night, but you cannot even have, you can't even spend five hours for him. And we spoke about these intervals. You can literally read the Bible for three hours a day, but by giving yourself time, okay, when I wake up, I'm going to read it for 30 minutes. On my lunch break at work, I'm going to read it for another 30 to 45 minutes. You know, at two, I'm going to read it again for 30 minutes. Maybe when you when you have a chance to listen to music, we've got audios now that are the Bibles. We're listening to the Bible. You are feeding your soul. You are literally getting your daily bread. Your daily bread is not your your bank. No, your daily bread is reading the word of life. This is what keeps you alive. This is what protects you. And then you're going to see people posting on social media, the luckiest people alive. And then you see people who nearly died. That was their spirit. That is prayer protecting them. There is not, there's no such thing as luck. That is prayer. There are angels protecting you. There is an angel assigned for your life for each and everything you do. There is no luck. God is giving you protection under the people, I mean, under the angel's wings because he knows your life. He doesn't see life the way you see it. He doesn't have your timing. In heaven, it is not time and hours. It is ages. That's how time is measured, to ages. Imagine they, they, they live through ages, not not hour. Not. That's why when you are praying here, that's why when you are praying here, you're praying for 10 minutes. That's like a day in heaven. Your 10 minutes prayer is a day. But if you're praying for like an hour, that's like 500 days. There was a, there was a video, I was talking about this yesterday, there was a video... You have to go, guys, on YouTube and check these things. There's a lady who had a testament. She died for 14 hours. But she was in heaven for five years. Imagine, on earth, it was 14 hours. In heaven, she was there for five years. So what does it say about your prayer? To to, to understand that the more you pray, the more you read, the more you labor in the things of the uh, of of heaven. It is the more there's there's so much unlock. There's things that unlock in your life. When you pray, you get in dimensions. Why do you think there's certain people when they pray, they're like, oh, that 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 that's a dimension. People who are praying, people who are crying, people who are laughing. That is different dimensions that the spirit is placing you in meaning that in that dimension there is something that you are grasping even though you might not see it physically but you are getting power of wisdom you are getting understanding you are getting sight you are getting the spirit of discernment that is why sometimes when you come back from a powerful prayer you feel yourself as a different person because your spirit has gained so much gifts that you can only access them You can only access them the more you read the word of God. This is a weapon. Guys, this is a weapon. This is a weapon. I've seen people. We've also seen videos whereby there was ladies that were, they were nearly robbed. This lady just put the Bible on that man's head. He fell down. He just went down. He just went down. That, that, That is a power of a praying woman that is the power of understanding that you're carrying a weapon you need to understand that you need to sow your seed in the right place so that god can give you the right tools to fight the right battles there there is no time to cry there is no time to go for asking for advice this is not the olden days where you all have to go to a priest to say father god i have sinned my sin is one two three Uh uh-uh the tabernacle lives in you that temple of the god lives in you the spirit of god lives in you when his blood spilled He also gave you the blood in your body. The blood was also to remove you so that he could live in you and he could direct you and showing you and leading you where's power. How many times, how long have you been a Christian? For four or five years, but you're still struggling with the same sin? Come on. Stop playing. Go read your Bible. Please. 
Go read your Bible. Go read your Bible, and the more you read your Bible, you will see that the tools that you've been asking advice for from your pastor, from your leaders, is in your Bible. All you needed to do is open your Bible and see. And when you see, he opens the gift of understanding. He opens the gift of understanding. Yeah, but I don't understand the Bible. You don't understand it because you're not seeking him enough. He says that seek me and I shall show you. Ask and I, it shall be given. He is your helper. But you are asking people for help all the time. Whereby the Bible says it himself that you will not find any other help. But through here. There are so many people here who are failing in life because they are going to the wrong people. The same person that you're asking help for is the same person that is literally putting a spiritual attack in your life. And you do not see that spiritual attack because you're so spiritually blinded. You lack knowledge. You lack spiritual faith. That's why you keep on going in circles each and every year and you want to now kill yourself. But the Lord keeps on saying, open the Bible. Open the Bible. Open the Bible. You are going to find your helper in here. I'm depressed. I have anxiety. I can't. I, I grew up from a poor family. It, that's, that's just the devil trying to show you, trying to keep you in that place. The devil trying to, like the, the oh, remorse. Remorse. Come on, guys. You need to do better. You need to do better. No, I don't like church. I don't like church because that one lady came to me and she told me that I, I'm, I'm, I'm dressed funny. I don't like that. I can dress anyhow. God, God is going to accept me the way I am. You're going to have a fight in a club, but you are back in that club, but you can't go back to that church. Who are you serving? What are you giving up? Why should the kingdom of God open your answers for you? Why should the kingdom of God open each and everything that you're praying for? The devil is laughing at you because you're living a double life. You're living a, a double life. You're living a life of a club in the weekend. And on Sunday, you're praising God. During the week, you don't even know him. You're just trying to get your money, boo-boo. That's all. I, I'm just trying to get my money. I'm just trying to get my money. You don't even give him. He says, listen, he says tithe and give me 10%. People think that tithe of that 10% is what? Is giving money to church? No. What about your time? Each and every day, 10% of 24 hours a day is what? Two hours and 40 minutes? You're telling me that you cannot give him two hours and 40 minutes? And it's not consistent. Read your Bible for that 40 minutes and then you say, okay, cool. So I've read like two scriptures. Now let me write notes about those scriptures and then let me pray upon those scriptures in my life. Because the power of reading scripture is to implement the things that are in the scripture in your life. Because the more you read scripture, it is the more you can see how you can strengthen your life. The more you can see that, oh, because I'm going to make an example right now. The book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 that says, seek the kingdom and his righteousness and everything shall be added to you, right? So you make your research, okay, so I'm going to seek the kingdom of God, okay, on his righteousness and everything shall be, so what is this everything? Isn't it you question yourself and the Lord sees your heart? And the more he sees your heart and he can see the fire burning in you, the next time you read your Bible, you will open a verse that tells you what he gives you, what he unlocks when you're seeking his kingdom, what it unlocks when you're seeking his righteousness. And you're like, oh, okay, so he's going to give me the money that I need. So he's going to give me wisdom. So he's going to give me understanding. So he's going to, he opens doors. The more you pray to him, the more you understand, the more you engage with him, is the more you, you get to know better. So look at your life and Jesus Christ as a life of varsity. Look at, look at him as the lecture saying, okay class, go and read.